The Mind Tech Podcast, episode 25, for September 12th, 2013. Shit Cat. The Mind Tech Podcast, episode 25, coming at you. I'm Gareth in Los Angeles, and I'm joined by Joe in London. Hey, Joe. Hey, Gareth. How you doing, man? Uh, not too bad. Pretty good. I'm still stoked about the Apple event. Yeah, whatever. Who cares about that? Oh, dude, I'm on cloud nine with that shit. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm quite right happy that, we, uh, that we've made it to 25 episodes. I know. Can you believe that? 20? Which is also, I believe, six months. Wow. Or, or well, well, we were. <laughs> six yeah. months. It's unbelievable. Well, you know, here's to the next six months, I get, I guess. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you, though, dude. I, get, I know that last week we, we touched on a little bit about your, um, your open quotes, new close quotes, Nexus 7. Yeah. And you were sweating a little bit thinking, you know, that rap bastard in, in the States, he fucked me over and he didn't sell it or some, you know, thieving postman pinched it. But no, you got it. Uh, well, no, is the answer to that. It's a quite a complicated story. So oh I think God. it was three weeks ago on Monday. We're recording this. Um, oh, yeah. Wednesday, it's September last, 11th. Is, is that one, yeah. Today's, uh, yeah. So your last week. And, and what happened? Tell me. Tell me the story. Well, right. So I I bought it off my friend in California three weeks ago on Monday, just gone. Yeah. Um, and he mailed it and he sent me proof that he'd done it. And I trust him anyway. Um, and so I've waited and waited and waited. And so I just gave up and bought one off Gumtree, <laughs> basically. Are you serious? Um, yeah. Well, if it turns up, I'll sell the one that... Because he sold me a 32 gigabyte one for 90 quid including shipping, and I got a 16-gigabyte one off Gumtree face-to-face with the dude for 90 quid. So I should hopefully be able to sell it for that if the 32-gig one turns up. That's very depressing, dude. I wonder what happened to it. Well, I don't know. If anyone's got any experience of sending parcels, I mean, I know you've got a little bit of experience, but if anyone else has got any, is is there any hope for me or is it definitely stolen? Because we've agreed that not this Friday, but next Friday, it is absolutely officially stolen. Yeah. And um, we, because it wasn't insured, it was too much to send it insured and stuff. So we... Uh, we issue, both agreed that we'd split the risk, basically. So if if it isn't here by next Friday, then uh, he's going to give me half the money back. <sighs> that fucking blows, dude. I mean, if if you'd gotten a tracking number and stuff, then then you'd have some kind of recourse. But with no tracking number, no insurance, that's it. It's gone. Well, that was the risk that we took. You know. So what you need to do now to work it is next Friday you call your pal and you say, hey, dude, you know, I haven't got it, when in fact you really have, and then you get half your money back. Yeah, that would be a really <laughs> honest thing to do. No. <laughs> I, I thought my plan was buy this other one, and that will sod's law make the other one turn up. Yeah, but so yeah. far it hasn't worked. <laughs> that sucks. So, anyway, so what do you think of it? What's, what's the story? How, uh, is it cool? Does it suck? What's, what's the deal? Yeah, well, the, bear in mind, this is the 2012 model, obviously not the new one. Um, and it's, yeah, it's really cool because I've got a Motorola Zoom, which I'm planning to sell now. So if anyone in London wants a Motorola Zoom, let me know. It's a great, great tablet, but it's just a bit too big for my uh, taste. That's a 10-inch one. Yeah. This is obviously a 7-inch Nexus 7. And, yeah, it's, um, I've, I've set it up to be exactly like my phone with the ADW launcher. And it looks scarily like my phone in terms of layout and everything. And widgets and all that. Were you able and to upgrade to the latest version of Android? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, it came actually with 4.3 on it. And then there was a little update which came a few weeks ago that the, f- the fella hadn't done. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's funny. The, the fella I bought it off, I said, well, why are you selling it? He said, well, uh, shortly after we bought it, <laughs> we bought an iPad mini and the kids <laughs> just <laughs> didn't touch the Nexus 7 after we bought the iPad mini. Told you. 
<laughs> no, he said it's because, yeah, although there's loads of apps for the uh, for Android, there's not as many educational apps, was his excuse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> educational, yes, of course. Um, but, yeah, that's cool. Um, you have to send me a screenshot, dude, or something, so I can post it uh, on, the, on the, the show notes, see what your screen looks like, your, your layout and stuff of... Uh, your new Nexus, but I'm, I'm assuming that you're digging it, right? You like it? It's cool. You having fun with it? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, my, I ordered a case which came like the next day, which I put on it today. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's cool. The only thing I would say is that the Wi-Fi, um, what's it called, Aerial, yeah, isn't too hot really because um, without going to, into too much detail, my bathroom is there's a brick wall between uh, my router and my bathroom, and um, my phone works okay. It's not full speed, but it does work okay. Whereas it's pretty ropey, the Wi Fi on the Nexus 7. Right. So, um, but yeah, otherwise it's, yeah, it's cool. I mean, it's a little bit different in terms of, um, because it's like got the tablet UI. Yeah. You know. So, uh, is that, is that, few... is that really different from the, uh, the phone or? Oh, no, it's very similar. But there's just like, for example, there's, uh, there's two drag down menus, like two notification areas, left and right. Yeah. Whereas there's only one, it's combined into one in the um, in the Nexus uh, in On the Nexus phone. Four. Right. So, uh, but otherwise, yeah, it's pretty cool. It takes a while to charge with a phone charger because I didn't realize at first that the uh, the the charger that it comes with has got more it's yeah. a beefier charger. That's ex- exact same thing with the iPhone and iPad too. Yeah, the the charger that comes with the iPad as opposed to the one that comes with the phone is a lot beefier. So, I mean, you can charge an iPad with an iPhone charger. It just takes a lot longer. Yeah. Uh, and can you, fi- can you charge the iPhone with the iPad charger? Yes, and it, it charges it in, like, no time. Yeah, because I did that, and I was worried it might fry my battery in my phone, but it didn't. It was No, fine. it charges. It just, I mean, it works. They both, I mean, it both works. It's just one is quicker than the other. That's all. I mean, but yeah, uh, yeah. It's, a, it's a beefier charger that comes with the iPad as opposed to the, the iPhone. Because, I mean, we've plugged them in. And we're like, God, this is taking forever. What's going on? And you realize, oh, you plugged it into the um, the phone uh, charger. Yeah. Well, because if I, if you plug it into a phone charger um, and use it, the battery it just doesn't charge up. It's just flat lines. Yeah. Um, but then if you, I left it overnight with the phone charger and it charged no problem. Yeah, it'll it'll, it'll, just, it'll, it'll work. It just takes a while. That's all. The, yeah. uh, it's always best to use the one it came with if you want to get it charged uh, lickety split. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so the Nexus 7, you like it. Uh, are there any major differences between last year's and this year's model that you know of? Uh, well, yeah, there's, uh, there are many major differences. Yeah, the, the 2013 model has got a 1080p screen rather than 720. Uh-huh. Uh, it's got a much beefier processor, more RAM, I think, um, faster SSD. It's just generally much better. Uh, but this one is still all right. It's not as good as my phone. It's a little bit laggier than my phone, right. but not, not that, it's not that bad. Um, and, yeah, otherwise, I'm very happy with it. Cool. Um, I have, I've only had it a few days, so I'm not sure yet. Well, that's, but, I mean, that's bittersweet. I mean, it's cool you got a new tablet, and, and it's awesome, but it sucks that uh, the one that you really wanted has kind of uh, lost in the mail. Yeah, lost in the ether. Well, it, I haven't officially given up hope until uh, uh, a week on Friday, but <clears throat> but I, deep down I know that some bastards nicked it Yeah, and, yeah. and probably sold it for five quid or something but, i always uh, remember that uh there's, there was that um that youtube clip um from last year i think when uh, apple came out with uh, like the iP- ipad uh four and um i guess some some dude had like a security camera filming the front door of his house and you see like the fedex guy come up to deliver some some packages and he walks up and he puts them down. When he puts them down, he looks over and he sees that, that I guess, another, uh, maybe a UPS guy or something had been there earlier and left the iPad, you know, a brand new iPad in the box propped up against the front door because no one was home. So he puts down his packages that he was delivering and then you see him, he looks around, his head looks, there's no one around. And then he picks up the iPad and takes it. <laughs> That's unbelievable, man. Well, it's like if if they didn't have that like little surveillance camera outside filming their front door, that's the perfect fucking crime right there. 
Yeah, I suppose no one's going to blame the. There's n- nothing, the nothing to trace him to that. Not zero, right? I mean, he's like, I don't know. I just came and dropped out the stuff. There was no iPad, so he's going to call UPS. Hey, what's my iPad? Oh, we delivered it yesterday. We left it outside your front door. There's nothing here. Mm-hmm. And in the meantime, that uh, the delivery guy's got a nice uh, brand new iPad. <laughs> yeah, but the other thing I bought this week. Did you see the photo I posted on Twitter? Uh, my cool foreign cradle that was like three fifty or something, yeah, cheap it, Chinese it, foreign cradle. Yeah, with a sticker on it or something, right? Well, it's it's not a sticker. It's <laughs> like you can you can put whatever photo you want in there, and it came with a photo of a hot Asian girl leaning on a Mercedes. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you should leave that. So I'm taking you? that out. No, I, t- I took it out. I don't. It's a bit, a bit embarrassing because if it's stuck on my car window with no phone in it, and people see that, they'll think, "What the fuck." <laughs> I, was, I remember years ago, I used to annoy my wife. We'd go into some store somewhere. You know when, when you walk in and they sell, like, picture frames? Yeah. They yeah. always have, like, generic pictures of people smiling in these frames. Mm. I'd always pick them up and say, hey, why would you want to buy this picture of, like, this person nobody knows? <laughs> you know? It was funny for, like, the first five times. After that, it, it got old. But The uh, thing with jokes, I find, is that it, it starts off funny and then gets old, but then if you keep doing it... It gets funny, funny. again, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's like my, the, my girlfriend disagrees with that. It's like a secular... secular, secular I can't even say it. A secular... How do you say that word, dude? Secular? Circular? Uh, uh, secular? I don't know. It's secular or something. But anyway, yeah, you're right. It, it starts off funny, then it gets stupid, and then it gets funny again. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Joe's Nexus 7. Well, on this end, I've uh, been playing with the Pogo plug. Is that a little Linux box thing? It is. Kind of. Yeah. Now, I, I should say, I've had this Pogo plug for, for years. At least maybe four, maybe five years. Maybe, I don't know, well, maybe three or four years. And I've never really used it. I remember I bought it on Amazon. There was like some sale. You could buy it. It was like, it was like 80 bucks new. Well, And then they had a 24-hour sale where you could get it for like $26. I was like, oh, cool. So I bought it. And they shipped it to me. And I, and I remember I plugged it in and uh, started playing. And the software that it came with was so fucking abysmal. It was so horrible. And clunky and stupid and a pain in the ass to use that I immediately uninstalled the software and just boxed up this fucking pogo plug. And that was the end of that. (laughs) Right. So then you fast forward two or three years where I'm doing a massive clean out because we had our big yard sale last week. And I find my old pogo plug and I'm like, oh, check this shit out. And I'm like, "Okay, what should I do? Should I sell it? Should I use it? Or should I throw it away? So I thought, well, I'll I'll plug it in and see what it's like. So I plugged it in and I downloaded the latest and greatest software, which is improved by leaps and fucking bounds. And now it's pretty awesome. And so what is it? A little server? Yeah. So what it is, it's just like this little box with uh it's got four USB two connections on it. So on the back, you've got three USB 2s, and on the front, you've got one USB 2, and then you've got a power connector and an Ethernet port. That's it. So you plug in your Ethernet, you plug in the power, and then you plug in a bunch of hard drives. And then suddenly, all these hard drives are available online. And you can access these drives anywhere on the planet as long as you have an Internet connection. So it's basically... Your own cloud uh, storage service. And it's completely customizable. In other words, even though it's got um, four USB ports built into the thing, you know, you can plug in a a little, uh, what's it called? One of those little... Hub. uh, Yeah, plug in a hub, you know, or two or three hubs or whatever you want. So you could have like 50 fucking hard drives hooked up to this thing. Nice. And so um, presumably you have to open a port on your router then, and then uh, you can access it from anywhere. No, you don't have to do nothing. It it just works, dude. It just fucking works. You don't have to do shit. So what you do is you plug it in, and you go to uh, pogoplug.com, and you log in, or you create an account. And when you log in, you click scan, and it scans your network. It finds the device, adds it, and then you start plugging drives in. 
Hmm. And then you install the software on your computer. And the so you, you got software for Mac, Linux, and Windows. So regardless of what operating system you're using, they have software for it. And once you install the software, um, the drives that are on the Pogo plug show up as drives on your computer. All right. And you just drag and drop. And you can be literally anywhere, dude. Anywhere. And, and you have access to these drives. It's the fucking greatest. That's pretty cool. And I'm presuming it doesn't use much power. And if you used USB, uh, like flash drives, then it would be... Yeah, um... yeah. You could plug flash drives in, whatever. Um, so I, I've, I've been fooling around with it for the last few days. I got it hooked up. I've only got one drive hooked up to it right now. And the, uh, the software it comes with, it comes with backup software. So you choose the folders and or, or files you want backed up. And you choose, you know, which file to go to which drive. And you click start. And that's it. You're done. So you're going to keep it then, obviously. I think so, yeah. And uh, I think I think I might actually sell uh, my uh, my Mac Mini server because really? I don't I don't need it anymore. I got this fucking thing. Oh, because that was obviously all running external. Yeah, because my, my Mac Mini server, I'm mainly using it for for backup and storage and streaming and shit like that. Um, whereas now I got the Pogo plug thing working, which uses significantly less power. It's significantly smaller. And uh, it, it just works. You can't convert shit, though, with it. That's, which you, you do with yours. Well, yeah. No, I, I use the server to rip DVDs and stuff and things like that. So obviously I can't do that with um, with the, the, the Pogo plug. It's basically It's just basically cloud storage. Just bring your own cloud storage. Do whatever you want with it. And and now I'm looking at their site, and they're offering a deal where you get for I think it's twenty nine dollars a special deal for this, this week only twenty nine dollars, and you get one year of unlimited cloud storage. So basically, oh. whatever drives you hook up to your uh, your Pogo plug locally, whatever you put on there is then mirrored on Pogo plugs servers. Uh, I think they use like Amazon S3 or some shit. So you have like you have the local backup, which is the Pogo plug in your house, and then the cloud backup, which automatically transfers everything to the cloud for twenty nine bucks a year. I'm like, that's a fucking deal. Yeah, that seems quite reasonable. That's a crazy cheap deal, and it's un unlimited. So I, you know, whatever size drives you hook up to this thing, that's duplicated in the cloud. Hmm. You can get one for 35 quid off eBay, obviously not with that cloud business. Right, that's just for your local thing. Yeah, but that's still a pretty, pretty still, good that's price. Great. It's a great price, yeah. I mean, you still got to buy the, the external drives and plug them all in and everything, but it's, it's, uh, it's local cloud storage. And the great thing is you can access these, this thing from anywhere. As long as you have an Internet connection, you got access to those drives. So what, you don't... Um if you, so you've got that running at home. You install the app on your yeah, Mac. Right. And then you take your laptop to Starbucks, and then it's just it's it's a local, as if you're it's a local at home drive. As well. Yeah, so it's got a local drive right there. Boom. But obviously the bottleneck being the network connection. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. It's crazy cool. And I've, I've had this thing for fucking years in a box. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, that's, that's just, the crazy thing. Because when I first got it, dude, honestly, the, the software was, was horrible. I was like, what the fuck is this piece of shit? But in, in, in the intervening, you know, two or three years or, or however long it's been, the software has improved significantly. And now the software is pretty cool and super easy to use. So now it's like uh, it, it works, you know. Mm, are you sure it's not made by Apple? <laughs> no, it just uh, works. I know, I know, it should be. Maybe Apple should buy them. Maybe. Maybe they'll, they'll... Now then, they'd... <laughs> what would you need iCloud for, though? Uh, I know. But yeah, so I'm I'm very happy. Pogo plug. Um, a little recommendation too. If anyone wants to get some cloud storage locally that you're 100 percent in control of, Pogo plug seems to be the way to go because it's very cheap, and uh, and it works great. Very happy with it. Sounds a lot easier than setting up your own own cloud server and oh, Jesus about like that. Christ! I was, I was looking at that the other day. Own cloud. Everyone's like open source. Own cloud. It's a fucking nightmare, dude. 
Well, you've got to know what you're doing. If you know, if you are oh, a sysadmin, then ten, it's a piece ten, of piss, obviously. Ten minutes into doing that, you're, you're ready to fucking blow your brains out. Well, if you've never configured servers and shit, then yeah, it's a nightmare. But if you uh, if you know what you're doing, then it's really powerful software, apparently. Yeah, well, it's like yes, if you if, if you're familiar with nuclear fusion, you can build the reactor. If you're <laughs> if if you're not, then it's going to be a big fucking pain in the ass. Yeah, basically. It's like, come on. No, it can't be that hard. No, I'm sure anyone can do it. It's just the amount of time and effort you want to put into it. Yeah, whereas this Pogo plug thing, just plug it in. Just plug done. it in, you're done. With the with, uh, own cloud, yeah, of course you can get it done. But if you've got a couple hours to sit there and type in bullshit and get things going, and when it breaks, go, oh, no, and I, oh, and I, you know, it's like, who wants to deal with that shit? I got, I got things to do. I got things to do in real fucking life instead of sitting there typing in commands about bullshit. Mm. Yeah. Indeed. So there you have it. All right. Um, any other tech stuff going on with you, Joe? Uh, not that I know of, no. All right. Has the, has the weather improved? Uh, no, it's winter now. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> well, is it dark so by three I, o'clock? I like to annoy my girlfriend because she's like into gardening and like really like into the seasons and shit. But to me, there are two seasons. It's either hot and sunny and therefore summer or, or fucking cold and it's just winter. Yeah. And it changed the other day. Like we had one last day of hot weather and I was working in this horrible fucking basement. Um, and then uh, that was it. I knew... And so that's it. Now it's just a downward spiral into winter and Cold. horrible Christmas. And uh, and so it's going to be another six months before it's warm again. Oh, how depressing. I know. Meanwhile, you're baking in that little room of yours. And, uh, well, we, we had a, a little uh, reprieve from the uh, the nightmarish heat. It uh, Yesterday was, was kind of co- very comfortable. I mean, it wasn't cold, but it wasn't hot. It was just nice. And today is pretty much the same, but I was watching uh, the news yesterday, the weather, and the hot chick weather girl was like, and we're due for a warm-up this weekend. I'm like, you fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, come on. Enough. We were due for a warm-up. Oh, it's, it's, it, uh, it's not just a warm-up, though, dude. It's not like it's just warm. It, it's, it's, it's horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. You know, it's like crazy heat. You know, well, when, come and live in London for a week, and then you, you fucking enjoy it when you get back. Yeah, well, that, that's the thing. My my daughter always says, you know, she loves the rain. She loves it when it rains. She's like, she's like, you know, happy and smiling, and it's great. And, and I'm like, yeah, but you. I said to her, I said, you love the yes, daddy. I love the rain. I said, well, imagine it was like this every fucking day. <laughs> Is that, that who loving the rain shit would be out the window. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like shit. it's like that every day. That shit gets old fast. If it rains once every six months, then it's a nice little novelty, you know. <laughs> uh, how about some news? Yeah, go on then. My tech podcast. Here is the news. Well, as we know, uh, on uh, Tuesday of this week, Apple had. A big well, it wasn't even a big event. It was a kind of small to medium event, where they announced the upgrades to all of its uh, iPhone line. They unveiled the iPhone 5S and the iPhone 5C, the new version of iOS, and they made some cool apps that were uh, you had to purchase. Suddenly, they're free, and uh, the Talked a little about, bit about iTunes Radio. Now, I was not blown away and or overwhelmed by these updates because everything was leaked on the Internet weeks and or, and or months before it actually came out. Um, so I wasn't blown away. But but I was kind of pleased. Everything they released was like a solid upgrade. Um, nothing uh, earth-shattering, you know. It, didn't, didn't, uh, it wasn't like, you know, a ground-shaking moment like we've come to expect from most Apple announcements. Um, but I think it was a solid up- update uh, all around on uh, their, their phones. What, what, what are you, what's your take on it, uh, Joe? Well, I've been really busy this week, so I've not been very on um, looking at the news and stuff. But the uh, the five S just looks like a beefed up version of the right. five. Exactly. Really. Yeah. Yeah. F- uh, physically, it looks uh, it's ninety nine percent exactly like uh, the the iPhone five. Uh, yeah, they've it, not gone for a bigger screen. I no, see. No, uh, the speculation is because they 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 do that. They um, they don't redesign the form factor. They do that every other year. 
So last year was the iPhone 5 where they had a brand new form factor. Uh, this year is the 5S. So they keep the form factor and upgrade the internals. Now next year, which will be the iPhone 6, that will have a brand new form factor. It can be completely redesigned. And my bet is on a much bigger screen. Because how is it four inches at the moment? Right. Yeah. That's what all the ladies say. <laughs> That's what I say to all the ladies. <laughs> whatever. Um, and the next one, what do you reckon? Five or six? Uh, I, I don't know. It's, I, I don't think it's going to be like a massive fablet, crazy nonsense bullshit. I think maybe just four point, maybe a four point five or a four point seven, something like that. It, yeah, it's not. Some, it's a not little bit more be... like the Nexus Four rather than the, the yes, Galaxy. Exactly. It's it's Note. it's it's definitely going to be a bigger screen, but it's not going to be like a Note Three fucking you know massive Monster. thing. No, it's not going to be nothing like that. I I really doubt that, but it, it will be bigger. It'll probably be bigger and it'll be thinner, and they'll they'll redesign the whole thing for uh, for next year. Yeah. Uh, the the most interesting thing to me is this five uh, C the which the comes in the colors and with a plastic yeah. back yeah and it it wasn't as cheap as hoped then no I I I knew, I, I kind of suspected it would be ninety nine bucks so so what they've done is they they they're keeping the iPhone four S an eight eight gig version of the iPhone four S and that will be basically uh, the free Apple phone uh, on on a two year contract um, you can get that one for free right. Uh, then there's the iPhone 5C, which is $99 for the 16 gig version, $199 for the 32 gig version. In, yeah, but this is, but who's interested in contract prices? Who buys a phone every, on everyone, contract? Everyone. Not, not in my world. I'm in my my world is a SIM only no, situation. No, it's, 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 see, that's the difference between the UK and the US. I oh, know it's more, much more common in the UK for people to get it's it on very, contract, but it's just. It generally, sort of geeky people tend to have realized that it's better to spend more up front. Like, for example, I'm negotiating at the moment, possibly going to leave my provider three and go to O2 okay. for various reasons. And I just, out of interest, g- g- wondered what it would be to get, um, uh, to, to get a uh, Galaxy Mega 6.3 oh, shit. Um, off three. A huge fablet thing. Yeah. And it basically worked out at... Uh, I think 600 quid because it, you can only get it on a 24 month contract and it would be it's a free phone and then it's however much per month but it would work out 600 quid for the phone yeah. which I may as well just pay 600 quid for the phone and not be tied it. into a 24 month contract yeah now you can uh, you can buy um, you know these iPhones uh, outright uh, and then choose uh, your provider and I think they're like you know five or six hundred bucks uh, for the uh, just the basic model, and up from there, you're adding more memory. Um, but most people over here, I mean, that, I guess it's more cultural than anything else. They go for the contract. Um, it, when you go in to purchase a phone, you walk into the T-Mobile store, the AT&T store, whatever the deal is, um, they'll they'll sell you on a contract. Um, e- even though there are options to buy phones outright and then do your own thing, most people will just go in and just sign up for the two-year contract, pay whatever it is for the phone, and you're on your way. Yeah. Now, looking at it, there are some um, prices for just the phone, SIM-free. Uh, $550 for the 16-gig version. Yeah. Or 650 for the 32 yeah, they probably quite a lot still. It is a lot of money. Yeah. Um, see, the way I, I mean, I've I've been an iPhone customer since the first iPhone came out in two thousand seven, and back then there were no you could not buy the iPhone um, outright. You, the only way you could get the iPhone is to get into a contract with AT and T. Yeah, because they were the only uh, providers back then. Yeah, I think it was O two maybe in the UK. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I signed up. Um, because I was with Sprint for a long time. I, I canceled my Sprint account. I went to AT&T just to get the iPhone. And uh, back then they were offering unlimited data. So I signed up for unlimited data, a uh, two-year contract on the iPhone. So I've never changed that plan. So I have unlimited data on uh, AT&T, which is kind of rare now because nobody offers that. Um, 
So every two years when my contract is up, I can then get a new phone. So my two-year contract is up now on my, on my iPhone 4S. So at this point, I can get a new phone. Now, it doesn't have to be an iPhone, of course. It can be any, any phone that AT&T offers um, and, and stay on the unlimited data. Um, but uh, obviously, it's going to be an iPhone. <laughs> so in, in terms of internals then with the 5C versus yeah. the 5S, uh, is what... Any difference there? Yeah, huge. Um, so it's got a brand new A7 chip, which is a 64-bit desktop chip. This is the first phone ever that it's offering uh, 64-bit, and it's a desktop equivalent. So this is an incredible. Is it is it still ARM-based though? Yeah. Okay. It's still uh, it's it's a very beefy, very very fast chip, and it's the first phone that's fully 64-bit. Uh, operating 54-bit, and the operating system is 64-bit also on the phone. Uh, it's got a much better camera sensor that works with the iOS uh, 7 uh, to create some beautiful uh, photographs. And, uh, you know, they, they keep pushing the envelope. The iPhone is still the best camera out there on, on a phone. Uh, not, well, no, actually, no, the, 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 the Windows phone, the Nokia Windows phone, um, has been getting some tremendous reviews as far as taking photographs. You can take some amazing photographs with it. It's just the phone is a piece of shit. The phone is garbage, but the camera on the phone is is pretty awesome. Um, but as far as just, you know, regular phones, the iPhone is still way, way up there as far as taking, you know, breathtakingly beautiful photographs uh, because it's all done in the, in the software, in the processing. So they, they really hone in on that. So it's got a much better camera sensor, um, uh, software processing, and, and all that good stuff. Um, what else did it have in there? Better battery life. Um Better radio for LTE. Now it's truly a, it's truly a world phone. Uh, it'll work uh, on LTE or any uh, fast network anywhere on the planet. Um, and I think that's about it. Unless I'm missing something. So the the five C is is a. Uh... Is that about as good as the five? Then? So the the five C is essentially the iPhone five with a plastic back, which makes way more sense to them than a glass back to me. Yeah, I'd rather have a plastic back so that if you drop it, it doesn't shatter. Now they did upgrade some stuff on it. the uh, The front facing camera on the five C is uh, a better version than the current five, um, but essentially. It's got the same processor, the same. It's essentially, an, it's essentially an iPhone five in a plastic case. Yeah, but one thing looking at it, it the five S and the five C is they're both available in various colors, but none of them are black. Like, well, the, who the, the fuck wants a pink or yellow or blue or green phone? Oh like, my god! No, I mean, no, there's um, the <laughs> <laughs> the uh, um, the iPhone five S you can get in black. No, you can get it in space gray. No, there's there's the is gray. Uh, there's, there's the gold. I'm looking at it now. And it then says, there's the black. There's the it's the like slate. Well, it says silver, space gray, and gold. Oh, I guess it's space gray then. Well, to me, it's black. That's yeah. the one I'll be getting. I'll be getting the space gray one then. <laughs> okay. you, when are you going to get it then? I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, they, they're not even for sale until uh, September 20th. So we got a couple of weeks before that comes out. Yeah, uh, but I will be upgrading to um, iOS seven uh, next Wednesday, so we can talk about that next week on the show. Uh, yeah. iOS seven is released next Wednesday, which is the eighteenth of September, and uh, iOS seven is backwards compatible to the iPhone four. Um, so if you have anything four and up, you're you're good to go as far as, far as installing uh, iOS seven. So I will be installing that uh, next week, and uh, we'll talk about that in depth so no os 10 news then no no i I, online uh, i've been hearing speculation that uh, os 10 uh, mavericks will be out towards the end of october which i'm assuming will because they're going to have another um another event before christmas they have to because they still need to release the uh, the new ipads os 10 and the mac pro so there's going to be another event probably 
early to mid October, I would guess. Okay, so not long at all then. Yeah, and then that will, and then then they'll release uh, the new iPad five, iPad, the new iPad Mini, the Mac Pro, and uh, OS ten Mavericks. Fair enough. Right, any more to say about Apple on board? <laughs> really? How can you be bored? This is amazing with the fingerprint sensor, dude. Oh yeah, go on. What about this fingerprint sensor then? Have you looked into that? So they they really on the uh, the this is only on the five S. Um, but no doubt next year it'll be on everything. When the, the, the 6 comes out, it'll be on, you know, it'll probably be on the iPad, the works. Um, uh, or maybe this year it'll be out on the iPad. I don't know. But uh, it, right now it's only available on the iPhone 5S. And it looks pretty interesting. It's it's basically you can use it to um, uh, lock, lock your phone, unlock your phone, uh, make... Uh, Purchases through the uh, the the app store just by putting your your thumb or your whatever finger you want really on the on the sensor. Um, and uh, this has been done before, of course, on many other devices, but it's always sucked really fucking bad. Yeah, on laptops and stuff, it's always been terrible. Yeah, it's been a nightmare. And, and you know, two seconds entry, like how the fuck do I turn this off? Because it's so horrible. Um, but usually when Apple tackles something like this, even though they didn't invent this technology, they're going to do it right, and they are going to perfect it. So it is going to work f- work flawlessly. It's good. Their Apple is all about the user experience. So the, if this thing was not working completely, perfectly, and flawlessly, they absolutely would not release it. So so it's pretty much guaranteed that this, this fingerprint thing is going to work out of the box without issue. You- you say that, but when the was it the iPhone four came out with the radio issue that you're holding it wrong? Yeah, it could be a repeat of that, maybe. I, I doubt it. I mean, it's possible, of course, but I, but I doubt it. I mean, even when that came out, I didn't have any problems with it. I mean, I know lots of people were bitching and moaning. Hey, I didn't have an issue. So maybe, maybe I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was only some people. I I don't know. But anyway, so they, they're going to release this this. Um, this this th- fingerprint reader where you set it up, it scans whatever finger you want, and then it stores it internally um, on the iPhone. And they made a special point during the presentation to mention that your fingerprint and your identity will be tied together in the phone, and it will remain in the phone. It's not backed up on any servers whatsoever. It's not backed up onto iCloud or anything. It only remains in the phone, nowhere else. And they made special, uh, they, they went out of their way, in fact, to mention this a few times during the presentation. And I, I'm assuming that's all because of, you know, the Snowden revelations and Prism and blah, 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 and whatever. And this is a security feature um, to the fact that it's stored solely on the phone and nowhere else is kind of like reassuring in many ways. I don't know, man. I reckon that's bullshit. The the more they say it, the less so, likely it is to be true. So you think they they're just outright bareface lying? Well, yeah, like when they said they didn't cooperate with the NSA. Well, they didn't. Well, so they say. See, I, I don't buy that because I mean, I think that if if a, if you ask a company a point blank question and they answer you specifically in either a positive or negative way. They're being honest. <laughs> if if they're very kind of well, I don't, well, you see the thing is, if they ask if they answer like a politician, you know, like you ask a politician. So tell me, what do you are you going to do this? And a politician will say, well, the question is not whether or not we're going to do it. The question, <laughs> if anyone answers like, then you know they're bullshit artists and they're full of shit. But if you did ask, you threaten to overrule him? But if you say to them, did you do this? And they either say yes or no. Then they're being honest. Maybe, you know? maybe. But we've talked about that enough before. I don't know. Maybe they. Maybe it's true. <laughs> maybe I'm just cynical, but I I just don't believe it. I, I, and it's not like any anti-Apple thing. I wouldn't believe it from Google or Microsoft or Yahoo yeah. or any other company for that matter, or McDonald's or anyone. <laughs> if it's <laughs> see, but, big, com- if, big companies are evil, man. Like well, that's, I, no, you don't I would get agree. to be a big company without sure. being evil. Absolutely. But but if you ask, uh, see, that's what I always get. If they go around and around and they never answer, then they're full of shit. 
But if, if they definitively say yes or no, they're being honest to the best of their ability because if at a later date it comes out that they actively lied when they were asked those questions, that's going to tarnish them. That's going to paint them in a very bad light. Yeah, but they just don't allow that to happen. The government does with Snowden and stuff, but companies are a bit sharper than governments, aren't they? Mm, so they so won't allow sharp. that to happen. They, they, people who know otherwise would know that if they came out and said something, then they'd get suicided or whatever. Well, they, 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 they said that the, the fingerprints are solely going to be held on the phone and nowhere else. And I, no, I, I, Yeah, I don't have I any believe reason them. to believe otherwise on that. Yeah, I, I believe them. But, but uh, you know, I mean, who, who knows? But I, I think they're being honest when they say something like that. It's only on your device and, and, and nowhere else. But who knows? You know, we'll, 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 time will tell, I guess. So there you go. That's what they released. Uh, they released them this week. Um, nothing ground-shaking. Nothing, uh, you know, uh, earth shattering, but uh, a solid upgrade on their uh, line of, of phones. Mm, well, I look forward to hearing about iOS 7 then next yeah, week. We'll talk about it next week. All right, what else we got? Well, so the new version of Android was announced. Now, uh, it's being, it goes in alphabetical order. I think it was Donut, Eclair, uh, Froyo, uh, what was the G one? Uh, gingerbread, honeycomb, <laughs> uh, ice cream sandwich, yeah. and jelly bean. Jelly bean. And everyone thought that it was going. To, the next one was going to be called key lime pie. Right. A nice generic dessert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But instead, they've somehow done some sort of shady bullshit deal with Nestle, and it's going to be called Kit Kat. That is so weird. It is just weird, isn't it? That's it's very strange. Everyone was just like, "What?" Like where'd that come from? Why, why, how did how does that even happen? How I mean, you're having the meetings, you know. Well, we're calling every release after some food, right? And the natural thought will be, well, it's you know, there's there's millions of different kinds of food out there. We'll just pick some generic deal, some food, and and, and away we go. No problem. Well, specifically, sweet food, and they they have tried to dress it up with, oh, there aren't that many sweet foods with K. And not many people know what key lime pie is outside of America, which is kind of true. But then again, who so the what? fuck knows what froyo is yeah. outside of... what is froyo? I don't frozen even, I yogurt. Don't know that like, frozen froyo? yogurt. The fuck is froyo? Exactly. Um, so, like, I don't know. You could just say, oh, well, whatever. It's up to them. And apparently no money's changed hands. It's just kind of... Uh, they're looking for um, there's probably wait, wait, wait. some bullshit. There's no bullshit mo- no money. Like, of course, there's money's change. They use they're using a copyrighted term. Yeah, but it's like uh, brand synergy. I think is the bullshit marketing term. I only learned that from watching Thirty Rock. Um, <laughs> um, but like, the, you could look at it this way: Nestle are going to benefit from publicity. Yeah, and Android's going to. Uh, benefit from the other publicity free the other chocolate one. yeah so like i don't know cynically you could say obviously someone's backhanded someone but in which way it kind of you can almost believe that they're both going to do they're both going to benefit yeah so it's going to yeah it's going to benefit both of them no question it's just very strange how, how that that happened it was probably some the uh the, the two ceos or whatever or two Top people were playing golf together or at some, uh, like, bloodletting ceremony or something. And uh, they came up with it. But the thing is, right, Google's whole thing is about don't be evil. That was their motto from the beginning, and they've tried to stick to it. And we could go on for hours about how they are evil. But, like, of all the fucking companies in the world to get in bed with, they choose to get in bed with Nestle. Now, what... One look at their Wikipedia page shows you why they should not have done that. Like, uh, I've, I've put a link in our show notes. If you look at some reasons why Google should not be in bed with Nestle. Right, and I don't want to go too much into it, but chocolate price fixing. Um, the, the main one is the marketing of baby formula. Yeah. So, like, in sub-Saharan Africa and other, like, piss-poor countries where people have got no idea what's going on and they're not educated and they're really ignorant... Nestle goes in and sells their bullshit baby formula that is lacking in enough nutrients to support a baby 
um, two mothers and says, ah, oh, don't, don't breastfeed them. Use this powder shit. That's way better. And they're going to get stronger and whatever. And like thousands of kids, uh, you know, babies have died as a result of it. There's a fellow in the UK called Mark Thomas, who's a comedian. Well, he's not that funny, to be honest, but he kind of does stand-up shows and he's more of a sort of political activist than a comedian. Yeah. And he, tr- he tries to be funny, and he is sometimes, but, uh, but he's a good dude anyway. And he, he did a whole show about this on Channel 4, about how Nestle are just fucking evil, basically. Um, and there's just, like, loads of stuff. They've tried to stitch up the Ethiopians. Uh, they used uh, milk from Zimbabwean farms that had been overthrown by Robert Mugabe. Um, they, like, big into the palm oil thing. I don't know if you know about palm oil, how no, it, like, no. really fucks up the forests. Like, they, to, to grow palm oil... It grows in climates where the rainforests are. So the, the local farmers just gut the local forest and just grow these palms to make palm oil. Yeah. And like they uh, peat swamp forests and all sorts of stuff. And it's like really fucking bad for the environment. And they, so they, they use, Nestle use loads of that um, non sustainable, unethical palm oil. And they're just an evil fucking company, more so than most companies. Um, like that, ba- the baby milk formula is like the, the that's worst right, thing they've done. That's messed up. But that's, that's like, not cool. just of all the companies to, to, to deal with and to get in bed with yeah. and be pally with, Nestle, man, Nestle. is like the most evil. I think it was like came top of some list um, in the last few years of the, the world's most unethical companies. And that's like, they're less ethical than fucking arms industry companies and um, stuff so why would they do that then why would i mean google they, they i mean for fuck's sake they're google they just type in nestle and they're gonna get the answers they want right they should know what what the story is with these fucks why why would they yeah, just you think like they'd put into google kit kat <laughs> who makes it nestle oh let's have a quick look at their wikipedia page all right oh. so they're based in switzerland oh, blah, look blah. At this. what the fuck is this shit no way we're doing that key lime pie it is yeah but no i just i don't know man it's it, it could just be a gaff, like a really epic gaff that they've done this, or there could be some sinister reason behind it. I don't know, but it's it just does not sit right with me, and probably with thousands of other people. That's crazy. That said, I can't wait to get the new uh, new <laughs> updates <laughs> on my Nexus device before just, anyone else. I know, you can just imagine there's like all this satanic chanting going on, and the guy from Nestle is like, Larry. Larry Page, pass me the sacrificial dagger. And by the way, what are you naming your next version of Android? (laughs) (laughs) How about Kit Kat? (laughs) This lightning crack. (laughs) Yes, Kit Kat, it shall be. Here, drink this glass of fresh blood. Glug, 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 Kit Kat it is. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. We will fuck over the world with Kit Kat. Ha, ha, ha. Our partnership is now complete. Google and Nestle will be the new triad of evil. Ha, ha, ha. It's unbelievable. I didn't know that the CEO of Nestle was uh, Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anakin, 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 help me, Anakin. <sighs> yeah. But um, you know what's the most annoying thing about this is? Um, basically, for the last, uh, I don't know, uh, while, I've been trying to not eat shit food um, in an effort to not be such a fat fucker, um, <laughs> including, like, crisps, chocolate, cake, that sort of thing. But when I saw, like, a oh, new version of Android, Kit Kat, and I saw the Android You immediately uh, wanted to buy a Kit Kat. I immediately wanted to buy one. There you go. So... So there you go. That is why they've done it. Yes. Soon, I resisted, though. I resisted. I didn't Soon do it. there'll be legions of techno people who are obsessed with chocolate. Soon our plan will come to fruition. Uh, have you seen the little android man made out of Kit Kats? Yes. It looks so delicious. We will make an android figure out of Kit Kats. The mass populace will gorge themselves on the chocolate. Soon we will be feasting on their flesh. <laughs> oh, man. I just can't believe they've done it, man. What was wrong with key lime pie? I don't know. It's, it's pretty weird. I, I, I don't really understand it, why they would do that. I'm looking at the page right now. They got the chocolate uh, Kit Kat Android guy, and then on the 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 cho- the, Ki- the Kit Kat wrapper, they have they have the Android guy with a big fucking stick of Kit Kat stuck in his mouth. <laughs> have you seen that oh, picture? 
Yeah, yeah. Like it looks, a, it looks like a massive black dick stuck in fucking Android's face. <laughs> Deep throating. Yeah. Nestle, yeah. Yeah. That is quite yum, symbolic, yum, actually. Yum. Yeah. I am eating a that. black dick. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> Android. Droid. Kit Kat. Mm. Have a break. Yeah, is Android going to break now, now that they got Kit Kat on there? <laughs> is that what's going yeah. on? But, like, yeah, what the fuck is an ice cream sandwich as well? Oh, that yeah. must be an American thing. It is. It's the bomb, dude. Is that like a choc ice? It's, it's, fucking, it's a little uh, bit like choc ice. It's fucking awesome. So what they do is with an ice cream sandwich is you get, like, two, like, uh, chocolate cookies. It's biscuits like, in there. Or English, chocolate yeah. biscuits. Um, and then you get, like, vanilla ice cream. And you stuff that in the middle of it. And that's an ice cream sandwich right there. Yeah, if you scroll scroll down on that page, the uh, android.com slash Kit Kat. Yeah. Oh, there's a, you can oh, see yeah, the, there you there's a picture. See the, the picture of an ice cream sandwich yeah. that looks like it's sitting in a uh, cum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so look, let's see what we got here. So we got an ice cream sandwich nestling in a, a puddle of, of sperm. <laughs> and then below that, we got some... Uh, some uppers and downers. We got some pills. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> you, you take a few of those pills, you get all fucked up. And then below that, you got like, you know, it looks like the Android, it looks like a, a line of, of five turds stuck together. <laughs> Doesn't it? It looks like a line of shit, like stuck together, each, each finger of Kit Kat. Mm. That's the weird thing about chocolate. Can you think of any other nice food that's brown? Um, like brown is like shit color in our head. Yeah. But for some reason, chocolate, the most desirable of all foods, yeah. is the same color, same as shit, color as shit. And yet nothing else is. I don't know. No, it doesn't. Uh... Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. There's something sinister about that. There I must think. be, yes. Then we will have them eat their own excrement. <laughs> Uh, okay. All right, let's move on to the next topic. Now, this is kind of interesting. Linux security, you know, with with the the advent of this whole Edward Snowden NSA nonsense that, that we've been bombarded with almost daily. There's new revelations that come out about what, uh, what shady bullshit the NSA is up to. Now, this is this is because, you know, we've always said Windows insecure, back doors up the ass, don't use it. Mac, yeah, same. Oh, Mac is awesome and wonderful, <laughs> and it's highly unlikely that it does have any backdoors, but it's it's possible. And then same as Windows, and then then Linux, open source. We have all the source code, absolutely one hundred percent, totally secure, no backdoors. Not well, maybe not. So basically, less likely, less likely, but still possible. It's very possible. Yeah, I suppose it is possible, but it's um so basically, even if you have access to the source code, there's no way to be 100% sure that the government hasn't put some shady bullshit backdoors into every single distribution of Linux that is currently available. And this boils down to the the code being compiled. And the the backdoors being in the program, right. the compiler program. Yeah. Now, when I mean, even when you think about it, dude, this this is uh, this is some pretty clever bullshit, dude. Whoever came up with this, you know, they, they, they're they're not some fucking mental case. These people are on the fucking ball. This is very smart. You know. Yeah, but this isn't. It's not exactly news. This, you know, Storman's been going on about this for a while, <laughs> and. Obviously, it all comes back to Stallman, yeah. the god. But he uh, was saying that you shouldn't, you should never ever use a proprietary compiler because it, if you don't know the code of the compiler, and you com- even if you compile your open source code, then it could in that compiler could inject nasty sure. shit yeah. into your binary that you get out that it right. spits out. But even the the GCC, the GNU uh, something compiler, which Stallman wrote. Um, even that was, as far as I know, compiled with a proprietary compiler. Yeah. So you're pretty fucked either way. Like it could be that all free software has had a backdoor in it for a very from long time. One. From day one, yeah. It's it's. Yeah. Um, I mean, 
it's very depressing because the scope of this surveillance program and uh, this this active intent of um, breaking encryption systems so that they can have access to all information on the network. Um, as a user who wants some semblance of privacy in his or her life on the Internet, you basically have nowhere to go. It's like, oh, Windows is insecure. I'm going to use Mac. Oh, Mac is insecure. I'm going to use Linux. Oh, Linux is insecure. I'm going to use... Oh, I guess I'm not going to use a computer anymore. Yeah. Pretty much. Not going to use a computer or a phone. You know. Or anything that connects to the internet or routers. Yeah. Because, yeah, even if you've got... um, uh, I mean, we'll talk about this later, but even if you've got a 100% free software operating system and you know what's going on with it, um, the chances are your network traffic is going to pass through a router yep. th- that has got bullshit, shady code on it. Yeah. And and it, it gets even worse than that, though, dude. And, and then uh, there's another revelation from Snowden that came out this week is that the NSA has been secretly working with Intel for the last 10 or 15 years so they can crack encryption and access systems at the chip level. So, yeah, so back, so, back doors on the chip. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what operating system. They, they can access through the hardware itself. Now, of course, I, I don't know how true these allegations are. They might be absolute fucking nonsense or completely factual or any point in between. We don't know. Mm, it strikes me that it's sort of a game, a numbers game. If you're using Windows with no antivirus and no security updates um, and no firewall, just a router that's got all its ports open, then that is trivial for even uh, a 12-year-old in his sure. bedroom to take control of your machine right. and do whatever he wants. And the more steps you put in place, the harder it is for them to fuck you over. Right. And the fewer and fewer people can have access to it. But ultimately, even with all the security in the world, uh, if you're using an Intel chip or you, your traffic's going through a router that you don't have control of, then... If they really, really wanted to, they could find you and and take control of your shit. Yeah, it's. it's I mean, it's all very, very depressing. Uh, I mean, but it's it's a numbers game. Like if you, I mean, it does boil down to the the thing that we don't like, we don't agree with, but it always comes back to if you've got nothing to hide, then fuck it, whatever. <laughs> Dude, it's not the point. It's like I know it's not the point. I, but no, no, I, 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 I have you. nothing to hide. Well, so neither whatever. do I. I mean, but, but the thing is, is that if in my mind. If I'm sending an email to you or anyone, the only person I want to be able to read that email is you, right? Even if the email is like, uh, hey, happy birthday, or hey, are we going to go to the pub tomorrow night? Or, you know, or uh, hey, watch this show on a t- t- 10 o'clock, like insignificant, trivial nonsense. If I'm sending that to you, the only person who should be able to read that email is you. Bottom line, end of fucking story. Well, yeah, obviously, but it's we don't live in that world, and we just have to accept it. We are going to live in that world, dude. Well, we do live in that world. No, I, I mean, I said that wrong. <laughs> We're not going to live in that world. We're not going to. Things are changing. Things are changing. There was a great quote on Twitter. <laughs> great quote on Twitter. That's a joke in itself. But there's a great quote on Twitter that came out last week is that um, uh, privacy isn't ending. Secrecy is ending. And you can see it all around you. These walls are starting to, to crack. And in some cases, they're starting to crumble. You know, people are, are suspicion, are super suspicious of governments, corporations. Uh, you know, people are looking at them like, wait a fucking second, this guy's full of shit. Look at he's a bullshit artist. Or oh, what are they up to? Why do you need that? You know, people are starting to question and think and oh, what's going on here? Whereas, you know, 10 years ago, they'd be like, okay, uh-huh. sure, that's a good idea. Let's do it. Well, I've got another wacky conspiracy theory, right. you know, 
go ahead. That I've been I've been bubbling up for a while, and it's sort of come come to the surface this week. What if Snowden, um, Assange, <laughs> etc., are like part of the man, man, and really the government doesn't have anywhere near as much control, or you know the powers that be don't have as much control over cracking encryption and spying on people as uh as led to uh, believe yeah and this is all just trying to reinforce that they they are the boot stamping on your face and there's nothing you can do about it whereas in reality they're they're not not they're, yeah, they're not as powerful they're, just they're, like, they're using yeah. this shit to make us scared sure. of them that's very possible and it, and that, like this thing that we say like that uh encryption obviously it makes it a pain in the ass for them but what if high level encryption they can't crack yeah well, uh, in Snowden's documents too, he—I he, mean, he has said uh, that uh, encryption absolutely does work if it's done correctly, and uh, we're going to get into that a little bit um, after after the news uh, and, and after we've had a break. But uh, but encryption is 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 still a, a viable option and something that we should uh, pursue, um, but it's got to be done correctly. Um, and uh, we'll go through some of those steps in uh, in a little bit. All right, let's move on to um, our final news story. Uh, I, I saw this uh, yesterday, and I, I think I tweeted this out, and I immediately shook my head in disgust and, and uh, wondered what fucking planet I was living on. Um, but apparently the UK government wants to ban dirty words in UK domain names. <sighs> I, I don't even know where to begin with this, Joe. Maybe, maybe you should kick this off because you're actually living in the totalitarian state formerly known as the United Kingdom. Yeah, it's a strange one, really, that they want to stop people putting dirty words in their domain names. Now, what the fuck? Although, interestingly, from this, I, I wasn't surprised to hear that China already has these, um, <laughs> the, the .cn, anything to do with, like, porn or gambling and shit like that, they, they won't allow. But al- also the Republic of Ireland. Now, I know they're pretty uptight with the, like, uh, the, the God-bothering and whatnot, Catholicism and shit, but I'm quite surprised that they have these restrictions. And in the UK, what the fuck, man? This is just more bullshit trying to censor our internet. If I want fuckcuntbollocks.co.uk, yeah. then what What the fuck? You know, just don't search for fuckcuntbollocks and you won't find it. It's got nothing to do with them. Who are they to tell you what you can and can't do? It's unbelievable. These fucking maniacs. Yes, we're, we're thinking of censoring dirty... You think, well, who, who are you to censor anything? Shut the fuck up! Who are these mental cases in suits dreaming up this bullshit? I think they're just trying to make us angry, man. Well, they're, they're, they're succeeding. <laughs> yeah. Hey, fuckcuntbollocks.co.uk is available. Should I buy it? You should buy it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to add to my list of yeah. other domains that I've got no use for. Yeah, you should totally buy that one. Fuckcuntbollocks.co.uk. Yeah, because it's... You, you know what you should you do? You can't get it straight up UK in... You should uh, you should uh, you should register that domain name and then point the DNS at uh, at uh, what was it Parliament dot gov or something. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Or, or it's, oh, dude, it's like why why is this even happening? I don't understand. Why would that even be on anyone's radar? <sighs> Who knows. Who knows why they would do that? Uh, I think it is just to try and troll people. That's the only the, the only explanation I can come up with. It doesn't make any sense. Like you could see the twisted, albeit wrong, logic of censoring the internet, which apparently has already started. By the way, my friend who lives fairly close to me um, told me that he can't get porn anymore because it says um, you, you have to phone up your ISP and request it and his situation <laughs> is kind of like he's not paying the it's kind of a shared house situation and he doesn't want to be the one to say hey i want porn again please <laughs> oh god so i need to go oh, around and show him how to use tour or something what a nightmare yeah but it's already started it hasn't uh, hello started for me, I don't. 
Hello, Virgin Media. Can I help you? Um, could you turn on the porn, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I no, wanna... he's, not, he's not with Virgin Media. I think he's with BT or I, I don't know. I'm not sure what ISP, but... Um, but yeah, it's already started. What the fuck is that shit, man? Oh my god, That's unbelievable! But like, but anyway, yeah, you can kind of understand the twisted logic of that. You can obviously, we all disagree with it. Probably anyone listening to this show. No, I, can, I, I don't understand the logic at all. You don't understand the logic of no. Please explain sen- it to me. Okay, I don't want my kids looking at porn. Why not? I don't want I don't want anyone else's kids looking at porn because that's my decision. So I want to censor the whole internet. Okay. Like I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm not saying the logic. I'm I'm saying it's full of logical fallacies and holes or whatever. But you can understand why someone no. would be stupid enough to want to do I that. I can't. I can't. I see. I I I'm one of those rare people, I guess, who can't fathom the the, the brain of an imbecile. I I cannot get my head around the 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 the, the thought processes of a fucking retard. Really? I, I I do not understand how somebody can say I don't want my kids not to, to see porn. Therefore, I don't want everyone else's kids not to see it as well. Hey, now, is that if if is you that just if, a lack of empathy? If you what? if you don't want your kids to see porn, that's fine. Then don't let them see porn. There you go. Case closed. End of fucking story. But who are you to say that no one else can? But how can you not understand that, man? I don't get it. Like, do you not have empathy with people? Like, empathy Dude, with... I'm so on, you have I'm no on, empathy with stupid people, is I'm, what you're saying to me. I'm on the spectrum, okay? Empathy is not one of my talents. May, maybe, uh, I don't know, like, uh, <laughs> do you have a grandiose <laughs> sense of self-worth? Yeah, I do, actually, yeah. Uh, sexual promiscuity. <laughs> uh, what are the other ones? Like... Uh, now, I'm talking about the Bob Hare checklist, the psychopath yes, test. Yes, the psychopath test. And one of them is lack of empathy. Lack of empathy. God. Mm, but anyway, it's, it's just, this is just complete bullshit and it fucking better not happen. There's, as usual, there's all like um, petitions and useless shit that's not going to change yeah, anything. Like nothing. But like... The, what, the only thing that'll, that'll, that'll change it is if people en masse start cancelling their internet connections and that's not going to happen. But if, if that were to happen, this shit would change in three seconds. Yeah, but the but anyway, getting a dirty dot co dot uk like who cares? You just get a dirty dot com instead, and you know whatever. Yeah, not really bothered. But, but who, who buys just... who who buys a, a co dot uk anyway? Nobody, right? Nobody buys that. Who buys that? Well, people buy that. It's the same people who buy domains with a dash in them. Just people who don't understand that if like it's I've I've been in bands for many many years, and my rule about a band name is if you can't get bandname.com then it's not a good band name because either it's going to be confused with other words yeah. or whatever and it, you get the like the official blah 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 dot com or blah 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 band dot com yeah. or, or something dash something and it, it's just whatever and it's that's the kind of people who opt for a dot co dot uk when obviously you just want a dot com if you whatever your project is your band your software whatever if you can't get .com, pick another name. .co.uk. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'd like to re- I'd like to register fuck my ass .co.uk. Is that okay? Or if if you can't get .com, then go for the Cook Islands, cool, what's, which what's... is .co.ck. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. And I, and I understand. I mean, most people over there, they don't give a rat's ass about this shit. They, they, it's not even on their radar. They don't give a fuck. They're like, whatever. What do I care? I want to watch no, the sport. No, they're more, more interested in the new iPhone. I, I want to watch the sport. Mm. You know, they don't care. The, the internet, what's that? Is that Facebook? What's, what, what's the internet? Facebook, right? Facebook is the fucking internet. Yeah, and no, those those people who know what they're doing, they they use Twitter as well. Yeah, Twitter. Okay, what we got left? That's about it, right? That's it for now. I need to go for a piss. All right, let's, break. let's take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Daily. Mindset Daily. 
Beat, hosted by Joe Dunn. A twice weekly and sometimes daily wrap up on the current news of the strange. Every episode will highlight and comment on news stories that have either not made it into the mainstream or just grabbed our attention. Mindset Daily, your bite sized alternate news fix. You can listen to Mindset Daily at MindsetCentral.com. Mindset Daily. You're listening to the Mindset Network. You can now hear all of the Mindset Central podcasts while on the go with the Stitcher Smart Radio app. On-demand news, talk, and more on your mobile phone. The latest episodes at Mindset Central are always available for you. No syncing needed and no memory or storage wasted. Available on your iPhone, iPad, Android phones, and beyond. Downloading is easy. Go to Stitcher.com or check out your app store. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to MindsetCentral.com. All right, Joe, so a kind of continuation from our uh, news-laden discussion that continues to be infiltrated by the NSA and the Snowden uh, releases, uh, there's a great article that came out this week um, from The Guardian. Isn't it strange how The Guardian suddenly becoming the bastion of truth and justice and honesty in the, 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 the mainstream media? What's your take on that, dude? Well, they've, The Guardian's always been the thinking man's paper. Like, all the idiots read The Sun and The Daily Mail. Um, and the Guardian's always been for your more educated liberal types. Yes, yes. Well, it's it's weird that um, I mean, five years ago, if you'd asked people in the street over here about the Guardian newspaper, they would have been like, "Huh, Raggy?" You know, they they would have been they they were no fucking idea what you're talking about. Not so much anymore. It's uh, more and more people in the U.S. are now uh, kind of aware of and kind of uh, respectful and in some ways in awe of uh, the Guardian newspaper. It's not helped the Guardian much, no, though. They're still losing, I think, a million quid a week or something. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, they're going through some shit, too. Uh, but anyway, they, they, they wrote, they've been writing some, publishing some great, great articles over the past few months in regard to Snowden and, you know, the, the, the quest for freedom and justice and all that good stuff that we, we all know and love. Um, so they, uh, they published, uh, an article this past week called NSA Surveillance, A Guide to Staying Secure. And, uh, you know, with these revelations, which may or may not be factual, uh, as we discussed earlier, um, the level of pervasive, uh, you know, um, uh, surveillance that's uh, impacting anyone who uses the Internet is pretty staggering. So uh, this journalist at The Guardian, uh, Bruce Schneider, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, uh, he wrote an article um, talking about what he does to try and remain private and secure in the light of these uh, these revelations. And uh, he wrote a pretty comprehensive list of things that he does to, uh, to stay uh, off the NSA's radar. And what I'd like to do is go through each of these steps and uh, talk about them. Uh, and see, see if we can get uh, some uh, some more information out of uh, out of us as well as what what he's talking about. So so here we go. This is uh, NSA surveillance: a guide to staying secure. So number one, the first thing that this guy does, or the first thing he recommends that we all do if we want to stay private and secure, is to hide your network. He says to implement hidden service services, use Tor to anonymize yourself. He says that, uh, yes, the NSA does target Tor users, but it's work for them. Uh, The less obvious you are, the safer you are. So this kind of ties into that. I mean, you know, we don't want to make things too easy for them. Can they track you through Tor? Probably. But it's also a pain in the ass. It's a hassle. It's work. So but it's also a pain in the ass to use Tor because it's horribly slow. Well, it's... Yes, it's not a pain. Tor is easy to use. Oh no, it does. But, but yeah, it is get slow. on there and use it. Yeah, 
You're right. Yeah, I mean, it's it, the, the the Tor software is, is is breathtakingly simple to use, but it is very slow. Uh, it will slow down your connection. Um, for like, you know, if you're surfing or downloading or doing whatever you're that way, it, it, it's a pain. But if you're sending or receiving email or talking through the IRC or internet chat or anything like that, um, the, the speed is neg- negligible. It's not going to be a big, uh, a big impact. Uh, now, a lot of the steps that this guy talks about here is all of these steps can be circumvented and uh, infiltrated by the NSA. But all these are doing is it's make if, – if they really want to get to you, they're going to get to you. All of these steps just makes their job harder. It makes them more hoops for them to jump through. Right, it makes it more of a pain in the ass to do what they need to do. So the first one is hide your network. So uh, now you have Tor installed. Do you, do you use it occasionally or, or not? Only I used it briefly to check it out and see what it was all about, and to have a look at Silk Road, and see what other hidden services were going on. But I don't really have anything to hide, so no, I don't really have much use for it, really, to be honest. Um, considering that I've got 120 megabit down. And I get like maybe one megabit down <laughs> with that. Yeah, one, one or two megabits down. It's it, it would just be ridiculous for me to use that on a daily basis. Yeah, you, you, it's um, Tor is one of those tools that uh, you cannot use full time. Uh, it, it's something that uh, everyone should have installed, and you should only use it when and or if the need uh, arises. Uh, using it all the time is is it's impractical and uh, it's a hassle because it'll slow down your connection significantly. Yeah, I mean, if I were to come across something in a company where I worked that needed to be leaked and wanted to, or if I wanted to research something that was was going to raise red flags, then maybe I'd use it. But uh, to be honest, I I only research like the latest phones and tablets and stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I hear you. I, I, I hear what you're saying. But it's a good good tool to have around. Uh, not, not that you're going to be using it uh, that often, but uh, uh, hide your internet service. Anonymize yourself online as best you can. Uh, next thing he uh, recommends is encryption, to encrypt your communications. Um, he says that while it's true that the NSA can target encrypted connections and it may have uh, explicit exploits against these protocols, you're much better protected if you communi- than if you communicate in the clear. And this is true. I mean, when you're uh, uh, not encrypting your communications, you're essentially sending uh, plain text over the network. Uh, which is trivial and a complete no-brainer for anyone uh, in in the, to intercept that and and read it without any issue whatsoever. Now, yeah. Whereas if you encrypt, then it's just making it that bit harder for them to to see what you're saying. And the the stronger encryption you use, the, the more time it's going to take them, the more of a pain in the ass, and if the less likely they are to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I use encryption. Um, I don't use it as much as I would like because, unfortunately, when you use encryption, you, whoever you're sending the encrypted message to has to be uh, tech savvy and be willing and or uh, involved in the encryption. You know, I, I just can't say, oh, I want to send a secure message to so-and-so and send it to him or her. And and they they're clueless in regard to you know for them they just open it up it's just garbage they well what do I do with this I don't know what to do you got you you have to be on the same page with whoever you're communicating with so that you can have secure communication and we've talked about this many times on the show um, encryption is a hassle it's an extra step you know especially if like me you use cloud based email in my case gmail and it syncs to multiple devices a desktop a laptop a couple of tablets now (laughs) and uh and a phone right there's just it's just completely impractical for me to use encryption it would it completely possible but just so much of a pain in the ass that i'm just not willing to do it yeah no i've I've received like you know encrypted email and i've been out and about and i'm I'm, all i have is my phone with me and i was like oh i've got an email i'll open it up and it's encrypted and i'm like oh shit 
So now I can't read it until I get home and get on my my uh, yeah my computer. Exactly. It's just that's just you know, I can't be doing with that. I need to. You can't I, uh, decrypt it on the phone. You have to wait till you get home, uh, fire up your email client, then you can decrypt it and, and read what uh, what needs to be uh, to be read. So there are there are lots of barriers. But if if you are engaging in a, a private conversation with somebody or some people. Um, regardless of what that, pri- and I'm not saying you're up to some shady nonsense or terrorist bullshit, but just, you know, maybe you're talking about something that's very personal and private and you don't want everyone to know about it. Um, then it's, it's, it's very, uh, good practice to, uh, encrypt those communications, you know, whether it's like a medical issue or, or who knows what. And, and you're yeah, talking, I was, I was going to say, Gareth, yeah. do you know any good cures for hemorrhoids? <laughs> <laughs> Shit! I meant to send that in an encrypted oh, email. Oh no! Uh, but you know, just then it, it's good practice to use uh, uh, encryption. Um, I, I personally would love to get to the point where I, every email that I send is encrypted, but the, the likelihood of that happening is is, uh, is slim to none. But uh, that, that's where I would eventually like to go. I don't. Uh, know, I think with things like BitMessage and uh, an evolution of that kind of technology, I think that it is getting more and more likely that it will be um, easier to do. Yeah, I think so and too. And more, more cross-platform and, and yeah. more, well, just more possible that we could live in a world where all communication is encrypted. In a world where all encryption is, <laughs> where all communication is encrypted. Um, speaking of Bitcoin. Yeah, but we're, we're not there yet, though. No, but we're We'll not. get there. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Bitcoin, I, I broke my Bitcoin um, uh, last week, so I couldn't uh, send or bit, receive. Bit message, you mean? Did I say bit, a bit message? I'm sorry. Bit, Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah it's uh, bit torrent, bit, bit message. Bit, bit. Bit. Yeah, uh, so I had, to, I had to reinstall it and get it going again. But now, now it's working again. So I, I got some messages for some, from some uh, users who, say, who said, yeah, I sent you a message via Bit, bit, I was a bit message, and you didn't respond. And I'm like, yeah, I know, because uh, <laughs> it, it wasn't working. But now it's working. So if, if you wanted to send uh, any messages via bit message, uh, it's up, running, and active. It's working. Um, yeah, so encrypting your communications is always something uh, that you should consider. Um, and even if you're not going to be using encrypted communications, let's say 90% of the time, it's good to, to familiar, familiarize yourself with public key encryption and familiarize yourself with how it works and have it installed on your computer. Um, so that if you do receive um, an encrypted email, you, you know what to do. You know how to decrypt it. You know how to respond and so on and so forth. So even though you're not going to be using it most of the time, it's good to be familiar with it, and it's good to have it installed just in case. Um, next point he makes is assume that while your computer can be compromised, it would take worse, it would take work and risk on the part of the NSA, so it probably isn't. If you have something really important, use the air gap. This is interesting. He says that since I started working on the Snowden documents... I bought a new computer that has never been connected to the Internet. If I want to transfer a file, I encrypt the file on the secure computer, walk it over to my Internet computer using a USB stick. To decrypt something, I reverse the process. This might not be bulletproof, but it's pretty good. This, I think, is probably the best tip that he has here. What do you think, Joe? Well, yeah, um, it's it's not quite the same thing. But um, when I used to have uh, a P4 desktop machine, which was uh, pretty ancient even when I was using it, uh, say, th- two or three years ago, I was mm. using that as my studio machine. And I had that completely disconnected from the Internet, Um not for security reasons, more because I didn't want any malware on it that would slow it down. I wanted to squeeze every every bite of performance out of it yeah. so that I could uh, run big Pro Tools sessions and stuff. Um, and so I think that, yeah, that is a good idea. If you, if you just don't install any network drivers or don't ever connect it, don't plug it into any network, then obviously it's never going to have touched the internet. Yeah. And then, then the only, the only attack vector for it is anything you plug into it, any USB sticks or sure. 
uh, any any optical discs that you plug into it. So yeah, I think that is a very good strategy. And then, so you only have to be wary of what files you're then, you know, what is on that USB stick. Ideally, you want to format that USB stick and only have the one file that you yeah. need to it or the one folder of files. Uh, so yeah, I think that is very good uh, because I, I was thinking like something along those lines, you could, you could get like uh, a super cheap um, EPC, you know, what do they call those little uh, net a, a netbook, uh, even a used one, you know, one that's like three or four years old, just some old tiny little netbook, right? That's, that's old and slow and not really used for anything. Uh, install Linux on it. Um, and uh, Linux will come with GPG. Uh don't connect it to the internet ever. Just have it, you know, disable the Wi-Fi or, or whatever's on there so there's no internet connectivity whatsoever. And then you just set up all your uh, your PGP, uh, your keys you um, on that device, and uh, you encrypt and decrypt on that device via USB thumb drive. You know, something that's a couple of years old, like a little netbook, that's perfect for uh, an encryption machine. Just make sure that it never connects to the internet, and I think that would be pretty secure. Yeah, or even a Raspberry Pi, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, okay, so so that's a great one. Uh, the next one that he that he uh, mentions is be suspicious of commercial encryption software, especially from large vendors. He says that uh, my guess is that most encryption products from large U.S. companies have an NSA-friendly backdoor, and many foreign ones probably do as well. It's prudent to assume that foreign products also have foreign-installed backdoors. Closed-source software is easier for the NSA to backdoor than open-source software. Sometimes, I'm sorry, systems relying on master secrets are vulnerable to the NSA uh, through either legal or more clandestine means. Now, it's interesting, he says that closed-source software is easier to backdoor than open-source software. He doesn't say... uh, Open source software does not have backdoors. It just means that uh, closed source software is a walk in the park on a Sunday afternoon to get a backdoor put in there, whereas open source is a bit more of a pain in the ass, but still doable. I think he means proprietary uh, <laughs> rather than closed source. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, well, that is interesting. I mean, as we were talking about with the compilers thing, it is potentially possible for uh open source free software to have backdoors in it and it's also possible i suppose for people to sneak in some nasty code uh somehow that gets overlooked by the people looking at it but yeah. with the many eyes thing the, the more eyes on the code the less likely that is sure sure absolutely so something like gpg uh open pgp yeah is much less likely to have backdoors in it Whereas anything proprietary, you basically assume that it's got it. Yeah. Now, didn't didn't you try and make me buy an app recently? I did. Yeah. Some, uh, I, I, some. This was um, this was an, uh, an application for um, uh, encrypted uh, text messaging on uh, on a mobile phone. So this was an app. I'm not going to mention the application, but it was an application that's that's cross platform. So it's available for iOS and it's available for app uh, for Android. Um, it uses, uh, I think, I think it uses GPG as its main, uh, encryption, uh, engine. Um, and it was getting rave reviews and everyone was saying that it was very secure. And I, I, I read about it and I looked at it and it looked like something that was really good. Uh, the design was great. It was obviously cross platform. Um, and it made the whole encryption process on your phone, uh, um, to be easier, you know, it, it's very seamless. You could send text messages to people that were encrypted and vice versa. And it looked like a pretty good program. And it was like $2 to purchase. So I was like, yeah, we should get this, Joe. You know, we'll, we'll buy it and we'll install it and we'll test it out. And we can talk about it on the show. And, uh, and I, I brought this up to Joe and I mentioned to him and he was like, nah. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Do you, want to, you want to tell us why, Joe? Well, for many reasons. The the one that 
I, I'm sticking to, and that is that it's proprietary. It wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't a proper free software license. Therefore, who knows what the fuck's in it? And right. if it's not a proper free software license and you can't properly scrutinize the code, then it could have backdoors in it. As unlikely as that is, it could have. And so any messages you send with it are effectively plain text, um, to, to the company at least. Um, but the, the bottom line is that I'm too tight to buy apps. That's why I use Android. Because <laughs> shit's free on Android. Well, it's, it's that, there's still a, a, an app store on Android. You can still purchase a bunch of software for it. You can still it. buy stuff, yeah. but I've only ever bought one thing, and that was SwiftKey, uh, which is a keyboard program. And that was because when I installed CyanogenMod on my Xperia, uh, Xperia Pro, that had the, the last phone I had with a slide-out keyboard, the only way to get it working properly with prediction was with Swift Key, and it was like 70p or something. So I thought, okay, I'll buy that. Yeah. Um, but no, I don't buy. I don't buy apps because I think that it's a dangerous, dangerous business. Because you start off by, oh, well, this one's only a quid or 79p or whatever, um, and you, th- you buy one. And I have a really addictive personality. <laughs> Well, the, Basically. See, but, um, but Joe, I mean, these, these apps are not just falling out of the fucking sky. People are spending a lot of time and expertise to make these apps. Now, shouldn't they get some kind of financial reward for all the time and effort they put into creating this stuff? Um, yeah. So, not for me, though. But you know, you know what I mean? I mean, it's, you know. <laughs> no, I, get, I do get it. I right? mean, these they people, should get this, some money, this... but like, that's what adverts are for. No, I know, but you don't want an ad. It, 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 uh, I, I, apps with without ads are, are more secure than apps with ads. Yeah, but that's what ads and donations are for. Like, make it more of a sort of uh, kickstart uh, um, bandcamp model. Like for music, there's bandcamp where you name, you you can sell your music for whatever price you want. Like you can say sell it for name your price starting at zero. So if people want to pay nothing, they can have it for nothing. Yeah. Or if they want to pay a hundred dollars, they can pay a hundred dollars. And I think that is more of a model that I that be sits better with me to, because uh... I'm just used to shit being free. I don't know. And yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, if if, if you got a choice of getting something for nothing as opposed to paying for it, you're going to want something for nothing. But by the same token, I mean, you got to look at it from the, the the programmers and the developers that are spending you know hours and weeks and months and years sitting in front of keyboards typing away, perfecting this awesome piece of software. They should get some kind of uh, you know. They're not just they're not doing it for fun. I mean, these people they they have to put food on the table and keep roofs over their heads. You know. Well, this is the argument against uh, free software uh, that people will try and argue with Stallman. You know, I'm a computer programmer and I need to yeah, feed my but kids. But Stallman and... doesn't, doesn't advocate not paying for software? No, no. He says that um, d- develop software uh, and be paid for it, but then release the code when, when you're finished sort of thing. Um, but if you release the code, then anyone can compile it and use it for free. Yeah, but it's it's like uh, um, the, the source code is available. So if you wanted to spend the time and effort to compile it and make your own, you could. Or you could pay three bucks and everything's all prepackaged and ready to go for you. I'd pay the three bucks. Well, yeah, like with Ardor, which is a, a audio digital audio workstation like Pro Tools or Logic or Cubase, which is it is free software, so it's free free of cost in. Um, Linux distributions that have got it, or, or for Mac and Windows, you can download the software, uh, the source code, and, and compile, compile it yourself, it, or you can purchase it and it's done for you. Yeah, you can just buy a binary and bish yeah. bosh bosh done. Right. So that's kind of more the model. Like I think that's a really great model. I think that that um, that that's just fair enough. If if you no, want I, the convenience, I, I, I yeah. agree. That that makes sense to me too. I, I, and I, I'd love it if more people did that. You know, release the source code. So if you have the, the time and the inclination, you could compile it yourself. Or you can just pay five, ten, fifty, twenty bucks, whatever, and then you get the, the package, you know, it's already compiled and ready to go. So so you it's it's a win win scenario, right? For for the for the consumer and for the developer. Yeah. I oh, know I, I agree. Exactly. I agree. All right, let's move on to the, the final point uh, he makes here as far as uh, staying secure. Um, he says, try to use public domain encryption that has to be compatible with other 
implementations. For example, it's harder for the NSA to backdoor TLS than BitLocker because any vendor's TLS has to be compatible with any other vendor's TLS, while BitLocker only has to be compatible with itself, giving the NSA a lot more freedom to make changes. And because BitLocker is proprietary, pr- proprietary it's far less likely that these changes will be discovered. It says pr- Prefer, I'm getting problems reading. Prefer, prefer symmetric cryptography over public key cryptography. Prefer conventional discrete log based systems over elliptic curve systems. The latter have constraints that the NSA influences when they can. Now, this is interesting here, especially the symmetrical cryptography over public key cryptography. And I think this, this is very similar to using GPG and using. Uh, bit message in regard to the way it's it's done because bit message is it's uh, the software it, it encrypts your message and sends it using your 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 address over um, the the bit uh, Bitcoin I guess distributed computing network bit message bit, oh God <laughs> you what always do am I, I going to say it right bit Bitcoin bit message blah 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 uh, and uh, I, now I, I had something similar like this happen to me this week, actually, because on the Mac, I, I use I use um, an encryption app- application called Knox, uh, K-N-O-X. Uh, it's like no- Fort Knox. Like Fort Knox, yeah. It's a Knox encryption. And uh, this is a great piece of software. Um, it is proprietary, and you do have to pay for it. It's like $20, but I, I bought it years ago. And I've been using it for a long time, and it's a no-brainer to use. And uh, it, it, you can encrypt uh, files, folders, or the entire hard drive, or create volumes. Uh, it's it's similar, I guess, to um, uh, what's what's TrueCrypt. Uh, is it true, yeah, TrueCrypt. Similar in in, in uh, TrueCrypt. And uh, I've been using it for a long time, but with all these Snowden revelations, I started thinking about it. So I sent an email. Um, to the support, uh, the uh, the support uh, people at uh, Agile Bits, that's the name of the company that uh, that produces it. And uh, I, I wrote I wrote an email to them, thinking that uh, I'll, I'll never hear from them again. So I have the email in front of me, and I'd like I'd like to read it to you, if I may. <laughs> So uh, the email that I wrote, I put like, hi, uh, first let me say I love Knox and I use it constantly. I love the look, feel, and functionality of the application, but I have a question. Due to the recent Snowden revelations, how secure is Knox? And I put that I've I've been told that uh, uh, only encryption you can trust is open source where the source code has been vetted. And I said, uh, please put my mind at ease or at least uh, tell me that development for Knox is continuing and that future versions will be 100% secure. Thanks for your time, Gareth. Um, So then I sent that off thinking, well, you know, that's the end of that. That's going to go straight into their spam bucket or the trash and I'll never hear anything from them. Surprisingly, two days later, I got an email um, from uh, their top security guy. And this is what he said. Hi, Gareth. The underlying technology used by Knox is Apple's disk volume encryption. This has been analyzed in great detail. Known vulnerabil- vulnerabilities are more, le- more or less part of attacks on OS X in general. That is, it may be possible to recover various encryption keys not the password, but the keys that are protected by those passwords by certain sorts of memory dumps. These involve attacks on the system that are up and running and which may have or have had recently the vaults open. So basically what he's saying is, so, so with, with the, when you encrypt something with, with, uh, with Knox, it creates something called a vault. So basically you have a folder with all your documents or, or files or whatever, and you encrypt that folder. So when you want to view the contents of that folder, you have to open up Knox, which in turn will open up that folder and make that folder visible to the finder in Mac. So you can access all the files, drag and drop files into the folder and, and use it just like you would a, a standard folder on the operating system. So what they're saying is that while that folder is open, it's possible to do a memory dump 
and get the um, the encryption key that was used to encrypt that folder, but not the password. When the file, the folder is closed and uh, you, you haven't opened it via Knox, then you cannot do that. Uh, it says, because the actual encryption mechanism and for- formats are visible for all to inspect, there is little reason to expect that Apple have actually put a deliberate weakness into it. We can never know for sure, but the scope for doing it is very limited, given the fact that these are encrypted spare bundles can have and can be analyzed. It's pretty much impossible for anyone even with open source systems, to prove that there are no back doors uh, in what actually gets distributed to users. But what we can do is try to follow the practices uh, that make would make that but would make it more difficult for a back door to go undetected. Um, and then he said, uh, "I hope this provides some help. If not, please let me know." Cheers, and then his name. So I was surprised by that because he really got into it and gave me some good information as far as the functionality of his uh, the encryption app that they produce. Hmm. You should email him back and say, come on the show and tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, I should have. <laughs> but, yeah, I was surprised because I, I honestly thought that, uh, you know, because you, you send it and that's the end of that. But, what was uh, the last email you sent to someone? She just said, uh, "Oh yeah, us. yeah." The, the, uh, some chick who works for the tour. Ah, uh, oh, that was it. Yeah, you were thing. like asking, like, "Oh, what are your best practices?" She yes, like, yeah, it was please, right. please contact. Tour yeah, because I thought it'd be it would be cool, you know, because somebody who's all you know all up in this stuff to to find out what the, what what software they use, what hardware they use, how they do it. I mean, that's good for everyone to know, right? Because it ups everyone's secure game. So I sent her an email, basically, and I was very polite and, you know, I wasn't a dick or nothing, saying, you know, basically saying, you know, what do you use? What's your, your good practices? And she emailed me back, email help at tor.com. Just like, fuck you, you know, <laughs> fuck off. Yeah. Don't ask me these questions. Get out, get out of here. The fuck's the matter with you? And I was like, oh, okay. All right, fair enough. Fuck you. <laughs> you know, like, all right, bye. And, and that was that. So, Sonia, this dude says prefer symmetric cryptography over public key cryptography. Now, yeah. public, d- does he mean uh, public key cryptography? Is that as in public slash private key? Public key cryptography is what GPD, GPG uses. Yeah, yeah. So he's saying use this other symmetric cryptography rather than than GPG, basically. Yeah. Why? Why? I, he's, I he didn't really get into as to why, because um, like that this last one is a little bit moonspeak to me. Yeah, it's a little cryptic. He's using a lot of uh, uh, there's a bunch of stuff like what's he say here? Um, prefer conventional discrete log based systems over elliptical curve systems. It, it sounds like something that Spock and yeah. Scott, Scotty would yeah, talk about. Yeah, techno babble, you know. And and Kirk would be like, <laughs> yeah. "Tell us straight, man." What, what is what is that in, in English, Spock? In English, <laughs> yeah, or like Bones might be saying, "Damn it, Spock!" <laughs> I'm a doctor, I'm not a, a cryptographer. Doctor, yeah, a... <laughs> <laughs> the hell is the matter with you? Yo, are you green blooded cryptological fucking? Blah, blah. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, it is. It does sounds a little um, gobbledygook, you know, techno babble, you know. But if we realign the warp core and reboot the system, it's like, come on, dude, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mister Data, analyze the elliptical curve systems. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little, uh, a little weird, but uh, yeah. So there you have it, folks. I hope these tips that we've read out and discussed has uh, helped you out. Um, I hope I hope uh, you've, you've uh, given me some food for thought, and it's been entertaining. Uh, I've certainly enjoyed uh, talking about them. But now I think it might be time for some feedback. What we got, Joe? Well, we've got it's mostly the usual suspects, but we haven't mentioned them for a while. So I thought they they said some good stuff this week. So so on Google Plus, Rob McKenzie says going to, going to take umbrage with you, Gareth. My kids have been raised to our values. Uh, and when they got an old on over tablet, they were over the moon. And since I've put several DVDs on a USB stick, can't do that with a Mac, uh, with an iPad, sorry, uh, they can watch in the back of the car even more happy. 
Uh, so there you go. Like your thing. I don't know if your kids are just spoiled bastards or what, <laughs> but like this idea that when kids get an Android tablet, they just want to smash it because they didn't get an iPad. It's like that um, super sweet 16 where she gets bought a car and it's the wrong color or something and she like proper freaks out. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, you're going to gonna fight back? Well, on, only in the respect that, that Rob used the word umbrage. And uh, yeah. it's not the 18th century. <laughs> But, uh, so you're gonna you're gonna have to resort to, to <laughs> name calling. The, the bottom line is that, like, if you are poor, like you you seem to be not poor and not rich. You're like all right, whereas poor people uh, have to accept that they can't afford like fancy iPads and shit. And so that's the beauty of Android. You can either have really fancy stuff like the Nexus 10 and the Nexus 7, or there's cheap. Like Arnova, I'd never heard of them, but it's presumably yeah, one of those cheap Arnova. tablets, and it does the job. It's whatever; it keeps the kids happy, and not not everyone yeah. can afford. I'm, I'm not saying that Rob is poor, but I'm saying not everyone can afford iPads when they've got kids because they bred when they shouldn't have, um, and you know they have bills to pay and all the rest of it. So sure. I think that it's a bit as, as do we all. You know, but it, that's a little bit like saying, you know, yeah, for Christmas my kids wanted uh, the new GI Joe toy, but I I just got them like a hula hoop and a stick. Well, yeah, but if you raised your kids properly, then and they were like, they were overjoyed. Well, I, without wanting to uh, say too much, when my dad was a kid, <laughs> shortly after the war, like he got like an orange yeah. for Christmas, and he he was like genuinely happy with that. Yeah. So. <laughs> fucking horror, yeah. Well, that was the thing, right? I mean, after the war, right, in the UK, it was all rationing and stuff. So oranges and fruit and everything, I mean, it was kind of rare, right? Because it wasn't like a... It wasn't like now where you can, you know, oranges anywhere. But back then, back in the day when there was rationing, these things were were like luxury goods because you couldn't readily get your hands on that shit. So if you, if, if, you know, as a kid in the fifties and sixties, if, if, you know, on Christmas you got like a bag of oranges, you were like, what the fuck? Oh, this is the greatest because, yeah. it, because it wasn't readily available. Exactly. Now the thing is you live in California and I live in London, right? which are two relatively bubble, like the kind of bubbles of, of prosperity in a world of completely fuckedness. Like the rest of the UK <laughs> is just fucked, like economically. Yeah. Like there's no work. There's like, it's just proper urban decay everywhere. And, and so like, it's all well and good for me working in million pound houses and shit, like where people have got all iPads and stuff. And I can afford an, uh, to, to buy a Nexus 4 and a Nexus sure, 7 sure. and a decent laptop. But most people in this country and around the world can't afford stuff like that. So, that that is the beauty of Android that you've got the high end stuff, right. but you've also got the low end stuff. Yeah, no, I, in in that respect, I mean, I, I would agree with you, and I would agree with Rob. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, I'm don't get me wrong. I'm glad Android exists. I'm glad there's there's something alternate out there that's uh, that's cheaper and more freely available than uh, the 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 iPads and the iPhones and the Apple stuff. I'm glad that stuff's available. Um, but by the same token, it's like if you were to give a kid a choice, you want this Android tablet or you want an iPad. I mean, it's a no-brainer. You're going to go for the iPad, right? I suppose, yeah. It's a suppose, no-brainer. But... You're, you're going to go for the iPad. End of fucking story. That's all there yeah, is to but, it. But I think it boils down to that not everyone has that choice to give their kids I, That's or. true. That's true. I, I would agree. And, and if you raise your kids right, they will accept that you don't have that choice. And if they want anything then they're going to have no, to have I mean of, of course not I mean you know they're, they're going to be they're going to smile and they're going to say thank you and they're going to take it and they're going to play with it and they're going to be happy and, and it's going to be great but I guarantee you in the back of their mind in some deep dark <laughs> recess they're thinking I wish this was a fucking iPad well I don't know man <laughs> I, my, my dad was doing all right when I was a kid and he got us Game Boys and Game yeah. Gears and shit that we wanted so I, I would have had an iPad if I'd been young so it's who knows? Anyway, so he continues, uh, and I have to agree. I have to agree with Joe about free speech. What most people forget about freedoms and rights is that there is responsibility to use wisely. What, 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 now, refresh my memory here. What, what, did, what did you? That was s- when we were talking about that hilarious list of stuff that Liverpool footballers aren't allowed to say, like. Leather oh, 
oh, don't okay. be a woman. That's right. I'd forgotten. And how that. I said yeah. that free speech is essentially a good idea and a good thing um, it, on a personal level. Like, uh, sorry, did I say free speech? I meant political correctness. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, political correctness is essentially a good thing if you take that on board on a personal level. If I try and be politically correct, then I'm go- it's, it makes me a better person. If you try and tell me that I have to be politically correct, then that's a different matter. But I think that it's a good idea for everyone to try and be politically correct uh, voluntarily, and then the world would be a bit of a bit nicer a place. I know you disagree with me because you're like a proper Tea Party type <laughs> fucking libertarian, <laughs> but... <laughs> No, I, what, I don't even know what that means, dude. I don't even know what a Tea Party type is. What is that? I don't know what that well, means. Uh, I don't know, like, really, really right wing, I suppose. I'm not, are you kidding me? Right wing? Well, no, wing? but like, uh, okay, not right wing, but like, uh, libertarian. You know, like, you think that, uh, fuck big government and we should be able to do whatever we want and that sort of thing. I mean, that, that viewpoint is very common in the kind of tinfoil hat conspiracy community. Right. That's true. Like you're like really anti gun control. Uh, whereas like without, it's, this is not the time and place to get into it, but like, I just don't think that people should have guns, including the government. But no, but anyway, like that whole thing of uh, like, I know that you politically, we disagree on some key issues. Um, See, I, I don't know, dude. I, th- I, th- I think, I mean, uh, yeah, we, we're going to disagree on some stuff, obviously. But I think overall, I think we're, we're probably on the same page overall. But there's going to be some instances, of course, where we're not going to see things the same way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But anyway, so uh, moving on then. Michael Doubleday said, uh, great show. Loved it. Uh, uh, so ha- hang on. Before that, uh, there was a back and forth on Facebook uh, with George McKinley about iPhones and Android phones that you have. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, he's all like mentally. Uh, he calls me an Apple fanboy. I don't know why he would what do that. Oh yeah, why? Why would he possibly call you? I have an no Apple idea. Fanboy? I'm not an Apple fanboy. Uh, yeah, that always drives me crazy. I never understand that. You're an Apple fanboy. You like, and they could release a fucking turd, and you think it was the i turd, and you think it was the greatest thing ever. You know, and that's that's nonsense. I, I guarantee to you, right, if instead of Samsung coming out with that eye tracking, like scrolling with just by looking at the phone, you said, oh, that's just a gimmick and that's bullshit, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. If Apple had come out with that on the new iPhone 5S, you said, oh, that sounds really amazing. Yeah, I've got to check that out. That, that, and that is true. Like, but arguing with a, a, a Mac true? fanboy is like arguing with a religious person. What do you mean? It's like it's like running in the Special Olympics. <laughs> no, it's not true. I mean, well, uh, Apple Apple absolutely has released some crap in the past. I mean, how, it's, where it's, was the last thing they it's released? Over, it's overwhelmingly shit. out uh, over, over overshadowed by their awesome stuff, but they have released crap in the past. Yeah, what, how long ago? Uh, let me think. What was the last shitty thing they released? Probably the uh, the iPod Nano. That yeah, was, that, that was just a complete fucking rip off. That was crap. That that's just ridiculous. You could get something that does the same shit for no, no. The one the, the, the one they did they released the iPod Nano with no no buttons or nothing on it. Now that was shit. And yeah, no screen or anything. Yeah, it was it was it was dumb. Yeah, idea. and you can you can get them off eBay. You just like uh, it just mounts as a USB stick. You just copy all your music on, and then you just like. Yeah, uh, I mean, when they released that, I was rolling my eyes, thinking, "What the fuck are you doing? That's that's crap." Yeah. Um, what else? Okay. What else did they release? Um, I t- I'll refresh my memory, Joe. What else? Tell me what what you thought was crap, and I'll tell you whether I agree with you. But not everything they release is great. Most. Of the I don't stuff think is, that. I think most everything. of the stuff that they release is good, yeah. but massively overpriced, often by two or more times what it should cost. So if it costs a thousand dollars, it should cost four or five hundred. Um, and if it costs five hundred, it should cost two or three hundred. Well, that's that's not something like I've always said. The, the the biggest negative for an Apple product is the price. You know that that's their biggest negative. Uh, is it, it's it, it, 
it's it's expensive. It's a premium product. You know, you're, you 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 got to pay to get into their ecosystem. Uh, but once you're in there, it's like you know, it's heaven on earth. But uh, mm-hmm. but the price is negative for sure. I, I would agree absolutely. Things are very expensive. You know, it's yeah. crazy. I wish things were cheaper. But then again, if they were cheaper, you get all the rabble buying them. You know, all, all the, the fucking <laughs> the common people buying Apple stuff, and I don't want that. <laughs> exactly, you fucking elitist Mac fag. You. Oh, you do anyway. re- you do realize that I was joking then, right? <laughs> I know that. <laughs> As Shakespeare said in one of his plays, can't remember which one. Many a true word spoken in jest. Oh yeah, absolutely. It was it was the one of the drunks and kids always speak the truth. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, anyway, well, right, Michael go. Doubleday said, uh, "Great show, loved it." I agree, Gareth. Google may be the undercover Darth Vader of the internet. <laughs> yeah, I often berate myself for using their very useful and easy to use stuff. I'm looking to move my MP3 slash four mobile device to an Apple iPod Touch next year. No, <laughs> uh, we will see. We shall but see. Great show. Uh, I think it's funny that Gareth, who is older than Joe, is all about seeing things change, and younger Joe wants more stability. Yeah, it's usually the other way around when the older guy wanting to settle into what they know, and the younger person wanting to see all sorts of change. Lol. A lol. Yes, nice and with a the lol there. Um, yeah, well, as I said to him on Facebook, I'm just really fucking boring, <laughs> and I just like shit to work and not change, basically. It's like food. I like to just find a few things that I like. And I just want trying. me chips. Just give me chips. I'll be happy. Egg and chips. Or Pla- chips. Plate of chips, some bread and butter, and, and, a, and a pint of cider, and I'm laughing. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I do try things occasionally, but then I find generally, right, not just with food or drink or technology or anything, it's not worth the risk of something being bad. Like the on the off chance that it might be better than what you're using now. See, that's it's that's not like, worth it. But that's like the Starbucks mentality too, right? Because you know Starbucks pop up, you know, planet wide, right? Anywhere, yeah. everywhere in the world, there's fucking Starbucks. Yeah, there's one like five minutes from my house. And yeah. when you walk into a Starbucks, you could literally be anywhere. Like I know that if if I was to fly to the UK tomorrow and walk into a Starbucks in any city in the United Kingdom. The inside of the Starbucks is going to be exactly like the one that's that's down the street from me. It's going to look the same. It's going to smell the same. Everyone's going to wear the same dopey Starbucks hat. The coffee's going to taste the same. The 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 fucking the the pastries in the in the on display is going to taste the same. Everything is the fucking same. But they yeah, might, but that's good. no, it's not good, dude. It's taking away from individual identities. I mean, every 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 place is morphing into the same place. You know, you you you. There might be like an, a little independent coffee shop uh, across the street and a Starbucks on the other side. But because you know Starbucks, you like Starbucks, you're going to go to Starbucks. Whereas the little independent one, you might go in there, might blow your fucking mind how good it is, but you never give it a chance. Yeah, but you see. The chances are it's going to be shit. So why take the risk? You see, this is just like a fundamental personality trait of mine. Like, why try something new unless the thing that you have now is shit? Like, if you're using Windows and it's shit, then try Linux. Fair enough. But I'm happy with Linux now. If some new thing came along... You wouldn't even I might try like, it, though. You wouldn't even I go... Might... How, do you, how would you even know if you like Linux without even, you know, oh, I'm, I'm not going to try that. I'm, uh, what the fuck am I trying Linux for? Well, it, I might try it, it, it might bit, be horrible. I, I, I'm just a very boring conservative. Like how did, how did you discover that you liked cider? Oh, I'm not going to drink that. I'll have a Coke. I don't drink cider. Ugh, ugh, it might be gross. I'll take a Coke, please. Well, that's the thing. Like, I didn't start drinking until I was, like, 19 because I never liked any booze that I tried. And then I tried cider. I was like, fuck, yeah, that's really nice. <laughs> and it just fucking but, went downhill from there. I know, but, but did, you hear, did you hear what you just said, though? Yeah, I, then I, I tried cider. Yeah, I, 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 tried know, cider. I know, but well, whatever, I'm boring. Yeah, Get you tried it. it. You gave it a shot. You got to try stuff. You got to mix it up and see what's out there. Nah, but with technology stuff, I do try stuff all the time. I might not give it a fair shot, like with Unity, for example, the Ubuntu default desktop. Yeah. I, I just took one look at it and said, this is fucking bollocks. I'm out. Um, yeah. 
But like I've tried OS ten and yeah, it's all right. It's awesome. It's, yeah, I could I could use it if I had to. But you could use I wouldn't this. choose to. I, th- I think you're a closet Mac fan, dude. I think I think if if <laughs> if you if you let's let's just say I won the lottery and I sent you a 27 inch iMac maxed out, you know, 32 gigs of RAM, two terabyte SSD, and you put that in your desk, your Linux fucking laptop would be in the garbage the next fucking day. And don't even lie and say it wouldn't. What well, I'll tell you exactly what I would do with it. Right, it would sit on this desk where I'm talking to you now. <laughs> And it would be dual booting. It would be using OS X for Pro Tools and Linux for everything else. No, it wouldn't. It would. I might, I might it possibly wouldn't. do There's this no show way. with you. In, it would yeah, not. It, you might. Right now you're thinking that. But then you, you fire it up. It's fast as fuck. Beautiful. Works like smooth as shit. Everything works perfect. You, 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 you'd never boot into Linux. Your Linux okay. stuff would be in the garbage the next fucking day, and you know it to be true. No, because I wouldn't be inclined to sign into my email in it, is the, is the bottom line. I'd be more inclined than on a Windows machine or a Windows partition. <laughs> but, it, like, I will not sign into my email on Windows. It doesn't matter who is... It doesn't matter if I am controlling that Windows partition and I've got all the security and everything. I won't sign into my email. It's, that's just the bottom line. Um, and th- with Mac, uh, with OS X, mm, maybe I would. I don't know. But I honestly... Yeah, you would. If, if I, I've never tried, because I've never owned a Mac, uh, so I've never tried to dual, dual boot it with Linux. But if I could get Zubuntu dual booting with OS X on, on a, like, a beautiful iMac... Now, don't get me wrong. They are beautiful machines. I've set them up for people. Um, uh, you copied all this shit on and transferred over from Windows, whatever. <laughs> and they are beautiful, beautiful machines. But I would still be inclined to run Linux on it most of the time, except for when I was making doing doing multimedia stuff, yeah, maybe I, video uh, editing. And... I booted into OS X and I got a semi lob on. <laughs> the, you you are a Mac <laughs> fanboy. It's like Alcoholics Anonymous. <sighs> like the first step is to admit that you have a problem, and I, you need to say, "I'm, I'm hi, Gareth. my name's Gareth." And I'm um, a Mac fag. Hi, I'm, my name is Gareth. I'm, I'm a Mac user. Um, I've been using for over 10 years. Welcome, Gareth. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, Gareth. Welcome. <laughs> Gareth, tell us, what, was, what, what drove you to the Mac? Well, uh, I had a very inconsistent and negative time in Windows. And uh, I started using the Mac only on weekends, but it slowly progressed to using it every day oh gareth thank you so much for your honesty oh very good we're we're happy to have you with us now who's our next new new uh, new member joe tell us about your your issue <laughs> uh, my name's joe and i am a free software advocate hmm joe um this is a mac help group i think you're in the wrong room the uh, the free software room is down the hall. Go down two flights of steps into the dark room with the leaky pipes. <laughs> yeah, you have to assemble your own chair. Yeah, if you could build your own chair and uh, the door is broken, if you could fix that... Uh, and then, and then, uh, see if you can put together um, a nuclear reactor using uh, some tape and a ball of string. Uh, then, then you can then you can join that group. The funny part is that I could actually do most of that, apart from the um, <laughs> nuclear reactor. I could fix the door and, and all that shit. Handed. Yeah, with glue. St- what do you say? GNU slash Linux. <laughs> GNU slash Linux. Linux. Yeah. Although he's kind of says that less these days. Linux. I think he's. Uh, He's sick of people taking the piss out of him, maybe. Well, it's um, it's weird. We talked about that in the show before. That you know, for years, Stallman was a bit of a mental case, and now it's like, man, he's the guy was so fucking prophetic. He, he's like a prophet now. It's unbelievable. Mm. Well, one last bit of feedback. Okay. I won't read it, but thanks to Chris Morland for saying very nice things about the show. Chris Morland. Yeah, with new name to me. He's not one of the usual suspects. So. Uh, that's that's why I gave him a mention. So yeah, thanks for listening and yeah. Hope is he your friend you... or who is this guy? You... No, I've never heard of him. He's yeah, he's part of the mindset group though because oh, it was cool. on Facebook. Awesome, very good. Well, welcome, Chris. Thanks for commenting. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. 
All right, uh, Joe, we've we've reached the end of a mammoth mind tech podcast. Over two hours. Wow, you guys sure. are get, getting your money's worth today. Yeah. Um, so but, um, yeah, if people want to contact us anyway, mindsetcentral yeah. at gmail dot com or the Facebook group and the Google Plus or comment on the show page or bit message. I, you know, I was just thinking bit message and I almost said Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the address is listed in the show notes. Uh, you can message us through that if you're so inclined. Uh, but uh, thanks for listening. Thank you, Joe. Some great topics, some great conversation. We'll be back next week to discuss iOS 7 as I, as I sit here and tell you how wonderful it is. <laughs> uh, but until then, farewell, good brothers. See you later.